Diabulela ma Africa mahle. Um isahloko kwendinikwe uba mantete kuso namhlanje ma Africa. Um, is the mental damage that has been caused by Western invaders in Africa. And how that uh, up to today has affected our unit. Umanyano, Lue to Sangama Africa. That Klinga can mention El Kama, Lango Magata to Stone Bima, Vit, Umanyano. Calling of Memnandi, a cool Lugata to Stone Bima, Vet Umanyano, my Africa. You know, uh, the second part of what I'm going to speak about is a historical perspective on how Western invaders affected Ingondoze to our mental state. And uh, how do we move forward as a united front and as a country and especially as young people? So that is the theme or that is the topic of a discussion. And this is what I actually take my Africa. Kuba, and Tetinyani, the Zami Lukringa, Upsugubong, Nenzo Gwezi, coming to the event, Ugoti, Ndoni, Dinga Teta, and the Tin, and Nepam Gwen, Ding Lumduan, and Dingoe, Pam Gwabanda Badala, Abanamava, Abanjingan. Go to again, the tear. Nam dissolved tinge, vanga van. The ayas bakona banda batala. Inguevu, nenguevu gazes coil up. As is our canyes and a pezul, gakumbi nobam nans out head. So I know what there are elders in this house, and I do want to pay my respects and my homage to all of the elders, Abandu, who have paved the way. For I do give my honor and respect to all of you, Bandabakul, Bandabadala, to the elder Ubauhatebe. We give great honor and respect. Lendo Enzega yo apa namsange, Nesibona is senzeganje throughout the country. Throughout the continent, there is a great awakening that we see happening up in Africa. But I think I want to bring a little bit of a context. So, I'm going to talk about pre colonial black Africa. Before the colonialism, very briefly. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the invasion of the white vultures. When the vultures came in Africa to invade Umshabawetu, the destruction that came with that invasion of the vultures. Where are we today? That's the third part of what I'm going to speak about. See, Pinam Sanje, Singama Africa. Where are we in the world? What is the state of the black race, the black nation today? And lastly, this will tell her about potential solutions to some of the challenges that we are faced with. So, very often in Africa we are told, and it is common knowledge today, that Africa is the cradle of humanity. comes from the continent. But to put it differently, we can say that the original man and the original woman are African. They come from Africa. They were birthed in Africa. So, Kauteta, Kasiteta ngalendo gutwa nguuntu o nguuntu. Untu is African. So, the, the first cause, the first people who were created, who walked this earth, the first people who populated planet earth were African people. The African men and the African woman. Leo in the Funegre clear. And you know, Tasi Tetang also will end on the Kumbule, Indo Elango Tetra, Indo Gobana. In the African consciousness and in our conception, we do not have this crazy patriarchal and misogynistic idea which puts women down. City, I 
Utiko watala in daughter. And then umdong mama wapuma from the rib of a man. That is nonsense. Because every man, every man, esimbonayo, who lives here, Uti Upo Mali, the greatest man you ever see, was once a baby. So wonke ubani, everyone that you see, the greatest man you see, wa inangwe bele mama. Everyone you see comes from the womb of umama. Sipuma esibele gwe mama. Which shows you that umada is divine, umada is creator, umada is heaven. You know, umama... So, so that's one point. But whilst we are told that Africa is the cradle of humanity, what we are not told is that Africa is also the cradle of all of the so-called civilization. Africa is the cradle of all of the so-called scientific disciplines in the world. Namthanje we are told that Abanduana Beetu, black children are struggling with mathematics. Black children are struggling with science. Black children are struggling with e-chemistry and all of those things. We can't relate to them. See so called. all of the subjects, Esigwaz Yugu's funda, it's just the simple subjects, the humanities and whatnot. But when it comes to the sciences, the complex issues, issues as the funa utile with the abstractions and problem solving, black children are nowhere to be found there. We are found wanting. But the problem is not so much that abandu anababandu abam nyama bayazi meds, oganyabayazi is science, nez subjects. It's because these things are taught from a white perspective, a white supremacist center. There is a philo everything, everything that you teach, everything that you teach is taught from a particular point of view. So in mathematics, we approach it today from a European perspective because we, and we believe that in, in mathematics, in science are things that were given to us by Europeans. So. Before the coming of the white men in Africa, we didn't have science according to what we are made to believe. And this is the problem that you have in Africa because, like I've said, whilst the Africa is the cradle of humanity, Africa is also the cradle of civilization. Africa is also the cradle of all the scientific disciplines. So you talk about mathematics, it originated in Africa. You talk about chemistry, it originated in Africa, and it's interesting, this word chemistry, because it's got a connection with the word kemet. And kemet, kemet being the, the, the original name of El Alizu Gutwai, Egypt, you know? And uh, Egypt, we speak about it because the civilizations that we were building, all of them reached their climax in ancient kemet. So that is when we had perfected the things that we were doing. But this civilization did not originate a Kemet. A Kemet is actually our youngest civilization. The oldest civilizations that say Africa come from the south, going up into the continent. Right when you reach an ancient Kemet, Egypt, that is when Gengogu, we have perfected the sciences. We have perfected the architecture, the art of building. We have perfected the masonry. We have perfected the medicine, the art of using herbs for healing. We have perfected all of these uh, uh, things. Egutwa zi science today. Egutwa umda nomdom nyama agagwa zugri later nazo today. So, for example, in mathematics, kuko ni doctor a Pythagorean theorem. Don't you think it would have a huge impact if you taught us in Dogobana, Pythagoras was a white Greek man. It was a white boy who came from Greece and came into Egypt in Kemet. 
and studied in Kemet for about three decades. 30 years studying in Egypt. And then went back into Greece. Gutwe Payana Kalkfigwa, he's the father of a theorem, a Gutwe Pythagorean theorem. Don't you think if a band who are studying medicine today were told in Yogobana, who Hippocrates or Hippocrates, that Greek hypocrite, who Hippocrates, because when people who study medicine, Kalkfigwa medicine, you take an oath, it's called a Hippocratic oath. It's named after a white Greek man, the Hippocrates. The Hippocrates. So, the Hippocrates was a student in ancient Egypt himself. For more than four decades, I mean, the Hippocrates, sitting in ancient Kemet. And the Gutwa, the actual person who was known as not even a father of a medicine, a god of medicine, Imhotep. So it would have a huge impact if you teach us about Imhotep. You see? You teach us about the people who founded the scientific disciplines as a second. Imhotep, he was a multi genius. He was the vizier or the prime minister of uh, the great pharaoh of Kemet. But he is the one who built the oldest pyramid in Egypt, which was a step pyramid, the largest and the biggest pyramid in ancient Egypt. It was built by a black man called Imhotep. You see? And so you need to teach Abandwana Beotua about Abandu. But also, Apatina, we had a great brotherhood, Apa in the south or upper however you want to call this part of our land. We had a brotherhood of people who were connected to the ancient Kemet. It's important to teach these things. To teach in the Kemet, it means the land of the blacks. The land of black people. Even even Elikama, let's see Greek, elite Egypt. When you go and check what does Egypt mean, it means the land of the blacks. You see? Even the, the Ethiopian name, the Greek name, Elikama, little Ethiopia, it's a Greek name, but it also means the land of the blacks, the land of the sunburnt faces. You see? And Ikamale Ethiopia, the original, the empire, the great empire of Kush, the Kushite Empire. So, my Africa, I wanted to give this context because this is who we were. We are the founders of civilization. We are the founders of mathematics. We are the founders of science and all of these things. And these things need to be taught up in Africa. We, we, our systems were matriarchal. We are the founders of a law which was built on a principle Ma'at, the Ma'atic principle. And the Ma'atic principle is represented by a female goddess with wings, you see, who stands on the balance of the scales of justice. So this is what needs to be taught. Tabandu Befunda, in law, Pagwe's departments of all of these Euroversities, because they are Euroversities, because they are indoctrinators, these faga European ideas. So, so, it was, it was quite funny to watch and see during the time of Fees Must Fall how black students were being ridiculed for calling for so-called decolonization of e education. It was even worse when a student from, uh, I think it was VETS or UCT, said that must decolonize the science, what must decolonize the mathematics, and people made a mockery of her because there is this lie that is perpetuated that the science is universal. Science is neutral. So when you speak about science, you are talking about something that is, you know, unquestionable, something that is just. And yet, is science now? You both know it. Song as I am, science was used to oppress us in many ways. And like I've said, everything exists is founded upon certain philosophical worldviews. 
and the science, in mathematics, in law, all of these things, the justice system are all founded on European ideas, European philosophical ideas. And these philosophical ideas are the ideas of, these are the ideas upon which irracism in itself was founded. So you talk about, for example, people go into university and study philosophy, and we are taught about Greek philosophers, Aristotle, or Plato, or Socrates, you know, and all of these people are called, are so-called great philosophers. And yet these are the very same people who were uh, justifying, they gave the so-called scientific justification for racism, for colonialism, for this idea of white superiority, that white people are inherently uh, superior to every other race in the world. So, um, one other example, Fulendo Yes Civilization in Tobago, is Indo Esi Fundileo through the works of some of the elders who are here. The fact that, for example, the oldest calendar in the world, Ilapi Africa, and Kansitape uh, Africa, I don't even mean Kwezanda was Pezulu, but Ilapi Mpumalanga, Inzalo Yelang, you know, that Tato Credo Mutua were teaching us about. You know, so, but also, oh, Tatum Kulunsing is at the great empire of Kemet. They've also given us an African calendar, which is based on the principles of the ancient Kemet, you know, and giving our own interpretation. Because, for, for example, if Umnunga Mbuz and Banista signs are perform use of bees and Sagittarius, Dungu Cancer, Dungu Banba, and Dungu Gemini, and all of these things. And all of these things are Greek gods, these are Greek names. You see, so we praise the gods of our oppressors on a daily and consistent basis. Standards is tiko zabatu on a daily and consistent basis. So how do you expect that you are going to be liberated as Mdum Yam? You know, when you praise the God of your oppressor, the same person who wakes up and prays to their white Jesus and say, white Jesus, give me strength to oppress this uh, kafir. Give me the wisdom, give me the strength, give me the ideas. Every day who bought a wakes up, who declare wakes up, Terry Blanche wakes up, they wake up and pray to their God. They invoke the spirit of their God on hot, on the land and whatnot. They praise their God. And when now you also believe that the very same white God, the same white Jesus is going to liberate you as Umdom Yamanjani. So, so Shutwe. Africa, so to two Ubuntu be Tunga Lonjel and Kaung and Abuntu, we in tone because sing a bantu in the sea and a umtu put on umtunga banya a band that is how we used to be as a band, but also Kaung umtu in your indirect define Iyo is isin to sahako. So if upu kwe and they rip you off and they strip you off Ubuntu Bako and Isin to Sako, then you are an empty shell. What to Steve Bigo? What is the black man is like an empty shell. So how Steve Bigo a fundi sangala philosophy of black consciousness. He was saying, oh, Steve Bigo, you need to pump back the life into this empty shell. You know, so that Umdom Nyama Agwazi once again to take their form and their shape. Black men, wake up, rise up from your bed, rise up from your sleep. That is what Ubigo was saying. Vuka. Yabo. You know, Lando Gutwa, you know, Amatambo Mawapinda Sanga and a sort of thing, you know. These dry bones. Gutwa, I mean, you know, can the dry bones live? Bachopa, you know, where's our Mate Pipilin? Can they live now? Because Abandabam Nyama, we are like a nation of Abandu who were buried alive. You see? And that is why you find all of the social ills that you find amongst Mdom Nyama today. All of them are embedded on the fact that we were systematically destroyed in Mondo Zetu, uh, were stripped off. But also our souls, because white people did not only attack our land, 
They do not only attack him on those two, but also spiritually our souls, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it's not only white people, only per se, because up north Africa invade when I'm Arab girl. Eh, I'm bang and doing a gospel like Muhammad, a gospel like Quran, a gospel like Islam, and hence you find the northern part of the African continent today is largely Islamic, because we were colonized uh, through uh, Islam, Muhammadism, and Yongele doctrine yaboye Islam up north, and right down south. The Christians came because some colonizers were Christians. So we mustn't run away from the fact that Christianity and colonialism, they go hand in hand in way one. You see, it's a hand and a glove. So, Uleo Indo, Christianity is a doctrine that has been crafted by Europeans to advance the white supremacist agenda. They are value systems. And the value systems, the whites, are embedded on their racism. Now, in the last year, we were going to make my Africa cousin born. I catch a lamely pelil. The last year, we were going to eat. What are the solutions? How do we move forward from this thing? I think that what we need to do, and this is an idea that I discussed and we shared with a brother of mine, Okon and I, up. I think that as African people, we need to use all of this because the purpose of studying about these civilizations is not simply because it's for amusement or for, for us to romanticize. But hey, we once had great civilizations. But what can we learn from these civilizations? So how can we take these civilizations and make them to be sort of a template of the kind of state or the kind of nation as if we so if um, Zegelo Suzotata, uh, uh, the, 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 the empire of Benin, city, Babi Senza Ganja ne Benin. Or if we take the empire of Kemet for that matter, and say the empire of Kemet, how, what system were they using to rule? And try and emulate Leo into I think that's one of the ways in which we can move forward. Siege na lendo yoso logo si only quoting and quoting that you know we had great empires and whatnot. But what can we learn in terms of how they were running their systems of government, how they were running their communities and so forth, the justice system? How was it? And how can we translate those into into today in a practical sense? And then the second thing, we need to stop working in silos. We have great many minds here. We have great institutions as call you up. Individuals, collectively, see the institutions. But those institutions are, are working in little corners here and there. So we need to stop that and, and find a way of working collectively. But most importantly, my Africa, we need to build, I think for me, a power. Because because when we build power, we will be able to build institutions. It needs to become institutionalized. It needs to be an institution. Study more on Umakaskavi. Study more about Umakaskavi, you know? And go and read and buy a book, Yake, The Philosophy and Opinions. It's very expensive. Those are the things in Tetangas. Let's have our own institutions. Publishing houses, Zetu. Publish all of these ideas that people have here, go away to and distribute them far and wide. Galomazu in the Abulela, my Africa, my Queen.